Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Um, for this video, we are going to make a picture with two orca whales. Um, it'll be the mom or dad orca whale and a baby orca whale. And we're gonna do rainbow water. I didn't wanna just do blue water because the whales are blue and I think they're kind of dull. And a little bit of seaweed and stuff at the bottom. So for this one, what I used, I used a combination of some Sharpies. I used some crayons for the rainbow water and um, a pencil, just a regular normal pencil and a black Sharpie. And I used some gel pens as well. Now, you don't have to use the exact same things that I'm using. You don't have to do the same colors. Um, as always, you have creative freedom to change what you want. And I realize you may not have the same supplies at home. So if I were you, I would just, what I do have, I would get about, whether it's colored pencils, or crayons, or markers, or whatever it is you have, I would just go ahead and get them out and have them in front of you. And then you can just kind of choose and select as we're going. Okay, I'm gonna change the camera view to where it is over my picture and we'll get started. Okay guys, so to start out, we are gonna start out on our paper and this is just a normal piece of printer paper and I drew number two and I drew the letter C. Now pay attention to where on the paper I put it. The number two is kind of in the middle, but it's a little higher than what the metal would be. And it's over to the left, just a little bit. And then up and to the right is the letter C. And notice that the C is quite a bit smaller than the number two. Because the number two is gonna be the parent whale, the mom or dad whale, and the C is gonna be the baby whale. So there should be a size difference. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our mom or dad whale. I'll probably, um, I'm gonna call it the daddy whale because I think it looks more like a boy. But you can of course decide what yours is. But right here at the top of the two here is where I'm going to draw the eyes and I'm drawing two circles side by side. And then I'm gonna do the little darker circles inside kind of like little googly eyes. And then over here on this part of the two, I am going to draw the teeth. Now keep in mind, this is an orca whale. It is not a shark. So the teeth are gonna be a little more rounded. And I'm gonna draw five. I'm gonna draw one, two, three, four, five. Okay? And then I'm also gonna put some teeth right here. This one, they're gonna be round again, but there's only gonna be four. So one, two, three, four, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna go over here to this side of the eyes, and I'm going to make a curved line that comes down like that, all right? Now I'm gonna come back over here. I don't know if you see how mine kind of comes up a little bit right here. I'm not sure why I did that, but I'm going to attempt to fix it. If you didn't have that problem, and chances are you didn't, you can just leave it below. All right, now I'm gonna give him some eyebrows. All right, and then right here at the corner of his mouth, I'm gonna make a teeny tiny little curved line then I'm gonna make another curved line that goes in the opposite direction. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down here, kind of underneath it, and I'm going to draw a fin. Okay, now I'm gonna go right up here, kind of on his back near the eyes, and I am going to do the fin. of his mouth was and I'm gonna make a curved line that comes down like that 
all right. Now he looks kind of funny, but I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna bring this line down a little further so it can kind of make a little more sense. I'm gonna fix that. Now again, if you don't have that problem, you don't have to fix that. And now I'm gonna do his tail. And you're going to see a little bit of the fin from the other side of his body, kind of peeking down here like that. And I'm going to make some little spots on him. Because you know, orca whales have <laughs> those little spots on their back. My son was just letting our cat out of his room. The cat was wanting out. It's kind of funny. All right, so there is the daddy whale. Okay, so now I'm coming over here to the sea, which is going to be the baby whale. Now, at the top of the sea, I'm going to make a circle and another circle inside because that is going to be the baby whale's eyes. Notice I'm coloring that in dark, okay? And then I am going to right underneath it, I am going to make a little fin. Then I'm gonna come over here and pretend that this line keeps going, but of course it's on the other side of the eye. So it's a curved line that comes down and a little spot on his back just like how the daddy whale has spots on his. And then I'm gonna make a little curved line right here. It looks kind of like a smile. And then I am going to come down here and this is gonna be his mouth. I'm putting my pencil right here and it's going to come down and like a little goldfish cracker smiling at you. And then I'm gonna have a line right here as well. Okay. And I'm gonna put another little spot on his back, kind of like his dad, and a fin on his back, like his dad. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm gonna draw his whale tail. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> and then you're gonna have a little fin right here where you can see the fin on the other side of his body. And one more spot right here. All right, so now we have the daddy whale and the baby whale. Okay, now just like we do at school, we're gonna take a black Sharpie if you have one. Um, if you don't have a black Sharpie, if you have a black colored pencil, a black Crayola marker, a black um, like regular marker, crayon, you can use anything. If you don't have anything like that, that's fine too. You can just skip this step completely. Again, beggars can't be choosers. And right now, I don't think I have to tell you, it's an unusual time in all of our lives. And we're just making the best that we can with what we have. But I am tracing over my pencil lines. If you can, it is always better to make them bold and black and where they can stand out. Because it just kind of gives your picture a little more of a polished, finished look. Those of you that go to the Innovative Learning Academy at Elizabeth Smith, you know we do this on almost every project we do. We use lots and lots and lots of Sharpies. And just going over everything. And then just like when we're at school, we trace over all our pencil. I always tell the kids at school, if someone walked into the art room, we want to be able to trick them 
would make them think that we drew this with a Sharpie, that we were so confident we didn't even use a pencil. So you should cover up your pencil so well that you could trick someone into thinking that. Okay, now I'm gonna take out an eraser. I don't have a good eraser like we have at school. I don't have a, a pink pearl or a white pearl eraser. I wish I did. I just have the eraser at the end of my pencil, so I'm using that. But basically, I'm coming in, be quiet, Chunky. My cat's over here crying because he's not paying attention. <laughs> um, basically, anywhere you can still see pencil, like right here, I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna do my best to erase it. That way, it just, again, it gives it a more polished, finished look. I know, be quiet, Chunky. most of the pencil here. So now I'm going to dust it off. And you may notice I taped my paper down to the table. Um, it's just because I, since I'm holding my phone slash camera with one hand, I only have one hand. I don't recommend taking yours down to your parents' kitchen table or counter. They may not appreciate that. All right, now I'm going to color the whales. Now, when I did my first example, I colored them with a more bold blue Sharpie. This time I'm gonna try this lighter one. And I'm just, that way I can kind of see which one I like the better, or like better, not the better. And let's see here. And I'm just coloring them solid blue. Now, again, obviously I'm using Sharpie. And I have the little brush tip Sharpies. You can see it kind of moves and bends on the brush. These are really cool, but they're not necessary. I think when I originally bought these, I actually bought them by accident. I thought I was buying regular, normal colored Sharpies. And to my surprise, they were brushed. But they're actually really neat. I'm enjoying having them. It is certainly not a necessity. You don't have to go to your parents and go, I need brush tip Sharpies, because you don't. All right, so there is the baby whale, and he is adorable. Now I'm going to color the daddy whale. And when I was making my example earlier, well, you can see how my Sharpie's drying out. Not cool, Sharpie. Look at that. It was doing just fine. And now it's drying out. I'm gonna switch sharp. Okay, so since my Sharpie decided to be really not nice, I am switching to the dark ones. So the baby sh uh, shark, <laughs> the baby whale will be the lighter blue and the daddy whale will be the darker blue. And that probably makes sense. His color would probably get a little darker as he got older into more places in the ocean. Just like when people get older, their hair gets a little darker sometimes. Until you get really old, then it turns gray. So I'm trying to cut now. I know you probably get so tired of me saying it, but we're not scribbling. You pick a direction and you stick with it. directions all over the place. I'm gonna be nice and neat. Like I accidentally went out of the line right there just a little bit. That's no biggie. But if I did that like 20 times, that might be a problem. Oh, and what I was saying earlier when I was making this example, my husband walked through and started singing Baby Shark. Appreciate. Now the song is stuck in me and my son's head. So we were a little annoyed by that. But if I know some of you, I know you probably were already thinking about that, especially when I accidentally called it a shark. Alright, and then I need to 
to color this top fin here. You can see this one's trying to dry out on me. Uh, someone someday invents a marker that can last more than a week. I will be very happy. All right, so there's Daddy Shark and Art. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> There's daddy whale and baby whale. <laughs> All right, now I have my gel pens and we are gonna make the little bubbles in the water. Now, again, it does not have to be gel pens. It could be just about anything. But I'm making like little circles. These are gonna be the bubbles. And like I make a little kind of reflection in them, the curved line. And I'm just using the different values of blue, meaning some are dark, some are light, some are kind of in between. Just to get a little more variety. important to know when to stop. You don't want it to look like attack of the bubbles here. Okay. Right, so there's my bubbles and that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave that alone as it is. Okay now I have my sharpies back out again and I am going to just make some little kind of if you can see these lines on my example and these are kind of in my head it's just kind of suggests the motion of the water and the waves of the water and perhaps a little bit of seaweed or kelp in the water. I'm also down here at the bottom I'm drawing some seaweed but don't go crazy cuckoo with it you can actually have too much seaweed believe it or not. And you want them kind of you want each one a little different. You want them different sizes, different shapes, going in different directions. You don't want them all exactly the same. So notice I did the light green. Now I'm gonna come in with the dark green. And it just kind of accompanies those light greens, meaning it's just right next to them. Kind of hanging out with them. Coffee cutting them. And then I also add the dark green to my seaweed. And again, it's just kind of coffee cutting what I already did to kind of add to it. That's not what it is. Look, that's not a cat. That's a little. Do I say cat? Well, I said copy cat. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to know, usually seaweed is just green, but I want to make it a little more interesting, so I'm going to add a little bit of pink to it. Again, one of my favorite things about art is it doesn't have to be completely factual, correct, and perfect. Can you imagine if Picasso and Van Gogh would have followed all the rules? Art would be very boring right now because they thought outside the box. They changed the world, literally. All right, now it is time for the rainbow water. Now these are the exact crayons that I used. Again, you don't have to try to copy the same colors that I did. You probably yourself a little nuts if you try that but if you look over here at my example you can see there's colors all different colors but I did not scribble I colored side to side left to right neatly and I did not scribble now I started out with green this one is a sea green how perfect is that didn't even realize that and notice I am coloring with the side, you can even kind of see on my crayon where it was. And that way, you can cover more area a little faster 
and it kind of has that softer crayon instead of coloring with the tip like this okay i am coloring with the side I'm trying to get it on there again like this and hopefully you can kind of see how that's a little softer and you can cover more area a little quicker so especially for those of you that get a little impatient and you like to finish and move on to something else Again, if you watch, I'm coloring side to side or left to right. Now, why do you think I would choose when I'm coloring my water to go side to side or left to right? If you said it's because that's the way the water flows, like the waves would be, you are correct. Notice where I'm putting the green. I'm just kind of putting it here and there. I'm not overthinking it. I'm just kind of putting it where I feel like putting it. But again, I'm not scribbling. Even though I'm coloring quickly and loosely and not overthinking it, I'm still not scribbling. And then the things I want to stay white, like the whale's eyes and the spots and his belly and his teeth, I'm not gonna color on those. All right, so I think I'm done with the sea green. I'm gonna move it over to the side. And now I'm gonna move on to just plain old run of the mill green. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and where there is white near that green, I'm gonna go in with the other green. So I'm, I'm not going completely on top of the other green, the sea green. I'm just adding on the regular green in those little white sections or spots. And again, I'm still just going left to right. I'm still coloring with the side of my crayon. And I'm still not scribbling. And again, don't overthink it. It should be kind of loose, free, and enjoyable. It shouldn't be something that's real tense and stressful. All right, and that's quite a bit of green. So I'm gonna move that over here to the side. And now I am going to add some blue. Now this blue, Milo, Milo's here. This is a sky blue. Even though it's certainly not the sky, it's water, it doesn't matter. And again, see this little white area here? I'm going in and adding blue in that white area. Now, I'm not gonna cover every white area with the blue, because I wanna leave some others. And I don't want it to become too blue, meaning having too much blue, because the whales are blue. I want there to be some contrast. Remember when we, again, learned the elements and principles of art, we were discussing contrast. Contrast is when something, two things are side by side or next to each other, and they make each other stand out because they're different. Like black and white, short and tall, skinny and fat, things like that. here and there and adding the blue where I want it. Again, I'm coloring side to side and I'm not scribbling. Now, be careful when you're coloring. Like mine, first of all, I'm an adult and it's my table. I bought it with my own money and mine's glass so I can clean it. But like, especially if your mom has a, or your dad has a wooden table or a nice table or a counter, please don't color on their countertop. Put something under your paper to protect it. All right, I'm moving the sky blue over. And now I have a periwinkle. So it's kind of part blue, part purple. And I'm not gonna add too much periwinkle because it's just, going in here and there and some little white spots. I can even go on top of some of the other colors if I choose. I'm just adding that color just to a few different spots, not too many. <laughs> All right, 
right, so here are the crayons I've already used. Here are the crayons I have not used. Now I'm gonna take an orange, and this one is melon. Now again, you don't have to try to use the exact same colors I did. Now I'm kinda gonna go around where the edges are and add some of this in. Now again, please put paper under your paper to protect your counters and your tabletops. Again, I am coloring side to side, and I'm coloring with the side of it. See how slowly the paper is kind of filling up. Now I'm going to put my melon over here, and now I'm going to get this is a yellow orange. Now it's getting to the point where my paper there's not as much white as you can see, so with it, I am going to start over mopping and layering colors. And that is one of the first things you need to learn and know if you want to be able to blend colors. I uh, usually have quite a few third and fourth graders that'll be tell me they want to learn how to blend colors and they want to learn how to shade. So the first thing you need to know if you want to do shading or blending is typically you're going to color with the side like we're doing. You don't want it on the tip like that because it gives you this kind of softer, your look. And then the other thing is you you layer. You go on top of each other. Now this would be more of an example of blending and shading. But while we are doing art at home and going through this, I am going to do a shading lesson. Alright, so there's quite a bit of the orange. So I'm going to put that over to the side. And now I'm going to take a yellow, good old yellow. And I'm just kind of, again, it's just kind of loose and free. The only thing I'm trying to be careful with is to not get it on my wheels where they are supposed to be white. Here. There's quite a bit of white down here where the seaweed is. So I'm adding some yellow down here. And if you look right here next to my daddy whale. Okay, so there's some yellow. That aside. And now I have red. So now I'm coming in. Now red is kind of a powerful color. It's bright, it's bold. Sometimes it can even be kind of dark. So I want to go easy with it. I'm not pushing down really hard with it. I had to push down a little harder with the yellow because the yellow is the opposite. It kind of is light and doesn't show through as much. But with the red, I'm just having to lighten up a bit so I don't overpower the other colors. You definitely want it to be in there so you can see it and have that kind of rainbow water look. But you don't want too much of it either. All right. All right, now I am going to do a purple. This one says violet or purple. And remember, violet and purple are the same thing. But you, if you wanted to be like completely scientifically correct, violet would be the color you want to use or the name for the color. Um, but in my experience, more people use the word purple. So as long as you understand they're the same thing, we're good. I honestly don't care whether you use the word violet or whether you use the word purple. I almost said pimple. <laughs> um, just as long as you understand that they are the same thing. 
All right, there's a little bit of purple here, there, and everywhere. I'll put it over in the used crayon pile. And now this one is a red violet. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kinda not go too bonkers with this. What I'm doing now is I'm searching for little white areas that I've somehow still avoided having crayon. And I'm going over it with this red violet. Probably gonna have to start layering and just kind of going on top of it. And you could actually sit here for a long time layering, adding these colors. But again, it is important to know when to stop. All right, so pink is over here now. Now I have my blues. And you may find it interesting that for coloring water, I'm using blue last. But again, I wanted the whales to stand out. I wanted them to have some contrast with the water. And if I colored the water solid, plain old, boring blue, they would not have that. So I'm just kind of going on top of it, adding some blue. Again, I'm doing it loose and free, but I'm not scribbling. This is that. Cerulean blue, which it's hard to tell the difference between that and just a regular blue. But I'm just kind of, if I see any little kind of white spots still, I'm adding that to it. And then this one is called Beautiful, like beautiful and blue combined. And it is beautiful. <laughs> it is a little bit of a darker blue stands out just a little bit more. But again, I don't want to add too much. And then that's basically it. So here's my new whale picture. And here is my first whale picture. And the only thing I really need to add still is my signature. So I have my black Sharpie here. And I am going I would have it further down here in the corner, but my seaweed is in the way. Over here, you can see I've left the seaweed out of the corner so I could have it right in the corner. But here is whale picture number two. And here is whale picture number one. And I like them both. I think they're awesome. I think I definitely like the whales being two different blues. I think that's a lot of fun. And keep in mind, he doesn't have to be an only child. You could add circle brothers and sisters. So keep that in mind. Um, when you're done and you have your final project, be sure you show it to me on Flipgrid. And I hope you and your family are doing great. Have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye.